are going to part seven of that message, and we are going to part two of the subtitle Destiny Challenges. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, um, I'm sure we all remember that message. I don't have the time to do a recap. We, we, we might be a bit late to round up the service this morning. Anyway, so in the, in the last message, we, dis, we, we, we discussed about destiny challenges. The challenges to come you know, that in the course of life. Amen. And we said those destiny challenges are challenges that ordinarily occur in the course of life. And these challenges, some of them tend to resist a man's destiny. Amen. And more often than not, or no, not more often than not, sometimes they actually derail a man's trajectory in life if care is not taken. And we say that destiny challenges are two in nature, internal and external challenges. And we said those external challenges are those that arise from your environment. Those that arise from your environment, your workplace, your friends, and enemies <laughs> and family, amen. And we, we we actually dwelt on that. We gave example of the family of Moses, and the Lord Jesus Christ even told us that a man's foes shall be men and women of his own household, amen. So don't think it is men alone, <laughs> amen. Then we talked about internal challenges. Internal challenges are those that have to do with you as a person. Amen? That has to do with you as a person. Your character, your habits, your temperament, self-control. Amen? Self-control or lack of it. Amen. <laughs> Whichever you want you applies to you. Amen? And we mentioned that external challenges will more or less come. You will always have issues with people at work, people at in your place of residence, everywhere. Even including the family, you will always, issues will always arise. Amen. But the good thing is that these external challenges, they cannot derail your, your destiny. Never. Praise the Lord. External challenges can never derail a man's destiny. They may slow you down. They may cause a delay in what God wants to do in your life. They may introduce some unexpected twist into your story, like Joseph. Joseph doesn't have to go to prison. He doesn't have to go as a slave to Egypt. One way or the other, God will get him there. You understand? But when people decide to sell him to Egypt, God stepped in. So the good thing is that external challenges more or less cannot go. No matter, you see, whatever you go through in life will actually strengthen you to achieve what God wants you to achieve in life. Amen. But it is internal challenges, your character, your habits, self-control of it all, or lack of it, those are the ones that are more often than not derail destinies. Amen. So this morning, we'll be looking at the story of Reuben, Moses, Joshua. Those are the three principal characters that we want to look at. We may talk about some other people, but those are the principal ones that we want to talk about. And by the grace of God, um, maybe you, you, you need to jot down your prayer points as they come to your spirit as I speak. Do you understand? I want us to, the first of our text, I want us to read this. First Chronicles chapter 5 verse 1. First Chronicles chapter 5 verse 1. Now, the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, 
for he was the firstborn. But for as much as he defiled his father's bed, his birthright was given unto the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel. And note that, and the genealogy is not to be reckoned after the birth right. Amen. Now, you see, what is happening here was that Reuben was the firstborn of Jacob. He was the firstborn of Jacob. And because he was the firstborn of Jacob, he's entitled to the double portion of the blessings, double portion of the inheritance, double portion of the blessings. Amen. But the Bible now tells us that his bad tribe was given to the sons of Joseph. Joseph was the second to the last born of the family. Actually, before Joseph was born, Reuben was already having children. Amen. So, but the bad tribe, the the leadership of the family was transferred to Joseph. How did this happen? What happened to Reuben? Reuben was caused by his father. You will see that in Genesis chapter 49, verses 3 to 4. Reuben, that was when Jacob was about to die and he was blessing his children. He now to, told Reuben, he said, Reuben, thou art my firstborn my might and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power, unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. When you go to the book of Numbers and you begin to look at the genealogy of the children of Israel, that was in the time of Moses, over 400 years, when they are listing the, 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 the population of each tribe. Half of the tribe of Joseph was more than total tribe of Reuben. And Reuben was already having children even before Joseph was born. Indeed, his tribe did not excel. Praise the Lord. And why? Reuben had no self-control. He had no decorum, no sense of decency. Amen. That's the way I would just describe it. And he hand himself a cause instead of blessings. When you look at Reuben, Samson, and King Saul, the three of them, they lost their destinies, not because of any external fault, but because of their internal weakness. Praise the Lord. Because of weak character, sense of decency. Praise the Lord. And when you look at even King David himself, the major crisis in the life of King David that almost destroyed his testimony was not because of the enemies. was not because of the Philistines. It was because of his own internal weakness. Praise the Lord. From love of women, lost inability to control himself, he took the wife of Uriah. And the, 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 the sick thing about the wife of the person he took was because Uriah was one of those mighty men of David. Amen. It was one of those people that they called the mighty man, so loyal to David. One of your most loyal person can just imagine the lack of decency, discipline, and decorum. Praise the Lord. And God reacted swiftly to Jacob and to, to David. The sword shall not depart from your family. Of all the children of uh, um, David, the first three males were murdered. Amen. And two brothers killed each other. Why? Just because somebody could not control himself. Amen. And like our people will say, oh, who did he offend? He didn't offend anybody. He himself was the offense. So, brethren, when things are happening to you, know from today on that nobody can stop whatever God wants to do in your life. Praise the Lord. Nobody can stop it. Amen. You see, destiny is assigned by God. So nobody can derail your destiny. The only person that can derail a man's destiny is he himself. It's he himself. Reuben derailed his own destiny for lack of character, lack of self-control. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to show you something. In Genesis chapter 43, Verse 33, I want to show you something there. Now, what Reuben did was in Genesis 35. But let me see Genesis 43, 33. 
I want to show you something there. Now, and they sat before him, the firstborn according to his bad trial. This was when they went to Egypt. And Joseph was there. He recognized them. They didn't recognize Joseph. So, and they sat before Joseph, the firstborn according to his bad right, and the youngest according to his youth. Now, this is where I'm going. You will discover that Reuben still sat as the head of the family. You understand? He, he still sat there as the firstborn, but in the spiritual, he was no longer the firstborn. Praise the Lord. The spiritual order was rearranged. The sons of Joseph were actually the leader. Amen. The Bible says that the genealogy was no longer reckoned with. As far as the heavens were concerned, his age was just a number. Not anything significant again. And he sold it possibly for just a five minutes of enjoyment. There are some things that a man will do for just two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, that will have eternal repercussion. Amen? A lot of people are walking around, and they are not walking in the plans of God for their lives because of one thing that they have done. And that thing might possibly not last more than a minute or two. And they will call it enjoyment. Praise the Lord. The same thing with Esau. When you go to Genesis chapter 25, read it from verses 31 to 33. I will not, I will not go there because of time. Uh, uh, Esau, in Genesis 25, 31 to 33, and he came back from the field. He was hungry. Uh, Jacob had cooked one pot, uh, uh, a pot of soup. And he said he wants to die, that he should give him some food. And because of food, he sold his bad right. Amen. How many of us are selling our bad rights? Amen. When you have sex outside the marriage, you are selling your bad right. Amen. If you have, we'll give me good names now, Afia. If you are having an Afia, you are selling your bad right. Amen. Because God cannot work with iniquity. Praise the Lord. He sold his bad right. From that moment, oh, you see, many of us we call Joseph, uh, Jacob the supplanter. He was, he's not a supplanter. He took what this guy doesn't want. See, plus he asked for it, sell it to me. Yeah, he asked for it, and he said, well, what is it to me? You can have it. He sold it. After all, Jacob gave consideration. Whether the consideration was adequate or not, the lawyers will explain that. Amen. He bought it. So, don't ever call Jacob a supplanter. It was Esau that called him a supplanter and he was wrong. He bought it. A lot of people will still be looking at Esau. He was older by age, but he was no longer the firstborn. Because what? Why? Because of lack of self. Many of us, what will we eat? What will we eat? Is what is disturbing our lives. Amen. The dangerous thing about all this is that God respects our choices. God respects our choices. The choices that we make, God respects it. When external enemies come, when external challenges come, God is always there to, de to defend us. Do you understand what I mean? Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 34 verse 19, Psalm 34 verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver him from all, all of them. Amen. But when a man is the one that is attacking his own destiny, from whom he's going to deliver him from? Amen. So, even though God assigns our destiny, Achieving it depends on us. That is the message that our brother was passing to us during the workers' meeting this morning. Amen. Amen. When Reuben misbehaved, God did nothing. At least it seems so, right? But 
quietly, he just replaced him with Joseph. Brethren, there is a lot of placement and replacement going out in the heavenly places. There's a lot of placement and replacement going on in the heavenly places. Amen. The thing is that God's agenda upon the surface of the earth will never be frustrated. If God wants to do something with somebody and if he, for one reason or the other, for lack of self-control, messed himself up, God so we just go with somebody else. When Esau preferred food to his birthright, to his destiny, God said, Jacob have I loved, Esau uh, hate. Actually, maybe that was why God made Esau to have a twin to follow him. Maybe that was why God sent a twin along. Amen? A man of God said something. He said, the day God creates a plan, he creates multiple persons that will carry out the plan. Because he knows. He knows who will fail. He knows who will perform. But God will not be said that you didn't give me a chance. So God will give you the chance. So when God is giving you a chance, he's giving you a chance, go and fulfill your destiny or go and fail. But it will not make you fail. If you, make sure, if, if, if you tread the path of fulfilling your destiny, God will marshal everything in heaven and on earth to support you. And that is why external challenges can never derail a man's destiny. Amen. When the Moses family, when they rose up against him and every the Korah, Data and Abiram, when they rose up again, what did God do? God defended Moses. Amen. But when Reuben, Esau, and our poster boy for recklessness, Samson, when they made their choices, their choices, they attacked their own destinies. When they could not control their flesh, they don't have any self-control. God respected their choices. God respected their choices. Many of us, we think that God is a respecter of persons. Amen? God is not a respecter of persons. If God will respect anyone, Moses should be it. If God will respect any person, Moses should be it. Amen? Moses saw the backside of God. He spoke with God face to face. God even testified that with Moses, I don't talk to him in any shadow of redo. I speak to him in plain language. Amen. So, there, if, if, if God will not discipline anybody, Moses and David should be it. But Moses could not control his temper. And that was the problem. You will see the story in Numbers chapter 20. You will read it from verses 8 to 12. Moses, go and speak to the rock. But because Moses was angry, Amen. It, it, because he was angry, he smote the rock. And that will not be the first time. Remember when he came from the mountain with the Ten Commandments? He broke it. He didn't have to break it. But in annoyance, he broke it. Do you know what God did? Because of the idea, we won't have time. That's why I'm paraphrasing for you. The second time that God took him to the mountain, God asked him to chisel it out himself. It was him that chiseled it up. Moses, Moses should have learned at that moment. But you see, there is something with anger. If you ask anybody to write a book on anger, I should be able to do that. Amen. <laughs> it's one of my greatest weaknesses. I can see some people laughing at me. At least I know mine. What is yours? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. You see, and he spoke to the children of God roughly, and God took it. Moses, you will not enter into that promised land. Amen. A labor of 40 years. Where, what he had been looking forward to for 40 years, anger did not let him enter. Praise the Lord. Anger, impatience, lack of tolerance, all of them, many more, many more, many more, you can 
you, I'm sure you know a lot of them. They are all dangerous emotions that can terminate a man's destiny. Amen. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 9 is one scripture that has helped me a lot. The Bible says that be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger rested in the bosom of fools. So sometimes when I want to lose my temper, I will say, oh, look, don't be a fool. Just relax. Amen. Something happened about two or three weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago. We wanted to do something on the church van, and I took it to the garage, and that's a simple thing, just to give me safety. And then I said, there's something to do with the brakes again. And I said, ah, towards the end of last year, we spent about 1,800 and something on the brakes. Why, why, we spend, why do we want to have to spend 975 again? On brakes again, this is a four-year-old van that nobody even drives during Monday to Friday. I said, this, yo, I just spoke to the man. I lost it. I will confess to you, I lost it. And I just told him, I said, this is your junk product. We are going to sell it and buy a Toyota. And I marched away angrily. When I got to my wanted to pray, I could not pray. Until I said, God, I will go there tomorrow and apologize. That was when I was able to pray. <laughs> so the following day, I just went back there. And the guy saw me was on phone. Maybe he thought I wanted to come and fight again. <laughs> so when he put down the phone and he was looking at me, I said, I just want to say I'm sorry about yesterday. I, I, I felt like a fool. Amen. But God intervened. The man just got up and stretched out his hand. He said, you are a great man. It takes a great man to apologize. I accept the apology. So, amen. I don't want to be going that back to apologize all the time. So I will remember that anytime I want to lose my temper. Praise the Lord. Anger makes a man look foolish. Amen. If looking foolish is the only consequence, it will be good. But sometimes it affects people's destiny. Moses, I can point to one or two things in my life that anger made me to lose. Amen. So please beware of your... If you are, if you are the kind of person that gets annoyed quickly, take note of those things. Amen. Proverbs 25, 28 says that this technology again. <laughs> he that had no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Amen. He that, which, if you get annoyed easily, you have no rule over your spirit. And that moment that you are annoyed, you are exposed to attack from the enemy. That's what it means by like a city that has no walls. Praise the Lord. So, finally, this morning on a positive note, I want to talk about Joshua. Amen. I love talking about Joshua. Now, God chose Joshua to succeed Moses. We all know the profile of Moses, the man who spoke with God face to face, who walked with God so closely. He had no life of his own. I don't think I envy Moses. Moses cannot just say, I want to go on a vacation. God will, say, God, God will just appear to him suddenly. Amen. No. <laughs> I think I would like it too. But <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> so if I was the person chosen to succeed Moses, sincerely I would be afraid. I would be afraid. But let us look at the story of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. Let us read verses 1 to 7. Joshua 1, 1 to 7. Praise the Lord. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses from the wilderness, 
and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto these people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from me to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, you will notice one thing there, that God was kept on encouraging Joshua. No one will be able to stand against you. Anywhere you go, whatever you, you place your foot, I have given it to you. But one thing that God wanted for Joshua was courage. Amen. Courage. Be thou strong and be of good courage. Only be thou strong and be of good courage. Amen. If a man does not have courage to rise up and do whatever God wants him to do, even the best of God's support may not be enough for such a person. Amen. Courage is very, very important. Baba Femi, I will always say that life is not what matters, but the courage you bring into it. Amen. You will have some convictions, but it will take courage to be able to rise up and do it. Praise the Lord. When you look at the story of Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 16, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 16, what happened to Elijah there? He was not afraid. I continue to say it. Elijah was not afraid of Jezebel. But what happened was that Elijah was discouraged. Upon all this that I've done, upon everything I have done, there's still problem. Many times, many of us, we get discouraged. We have tried, we have done this, we have done that, we have done that. Instead of seeing results, we begin to see something that are not, that are contrary to what we expect. And thereby, thereby we get discouraged. Brethren, never get discouraged. Amen. Always encourage. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Amen. And that was why God told Elijah, go and anoint Elisha in your room. Remember we said that placement and replacement is always going on in the heavenlies. Praise the Lord. When you see the story of the children of Israel too, in Numbers chapter 2, um, 14, they sent them to go and uh, view the land in Numbers chapter 13. But by the time they came back, the out of the ten, 12 spies, 10 were discouraged. They lost courage. They were afraid. Only two had enough courage to say, we are able to. Let us go forward. And only those two succeeded. Only those two entered into the promised land. Amen. For you, brethren, to enter into the plans and purpose of God for your life, you need courage. Amen. Why? Why do you need courage? Because courage is an internal affair. Is a way you react to what you see external. Remember I mentioned that you will see some things externally. Challenges will come externally. But the way you react to it is the most important thing. Praise the Lord. People will annoy you. They will drag you. You will do your best. They will condemn it. All those, whatever they have said, will not do anything to your destiny. But the way you react to it. Oh, they are not appreciating me. They are not doing this. They are not doing this. Therefore, I'm not doing it anymore. Amen. It is your reaction. It is the way you react. Amen. So, what is God looking for? God is looking for men and women of sterling character. Character. Amen. Not charisma. As they say, charisma can take you so high, but character will pull you down. If you don't, if you, it is the character that will sustain you. Amen. You may be, you, because of your uh, eloquence, good looks, 
and everything. You may bamboozle people that they will promote you before you know it, but it is your character that will sustain the program. Praise the Lord. You see, pride has killed a lot of people, especially in ministry. I'm in ministry, so I can say it. Pride has killed a lot of people. There were many people that we knew in the 1970s, the early in the 1990s and early 2000s, and we thought that these people they are going to go far with God, but pride destroyed many of them. Little anointing they became, they became too big for God to carry, and they forgot that God has replacements. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that God resists the proud, and He gives grace to the humble. It is only the humble that su that succeed at last. Humble yourself. A lot of people feel that if you humble yourself, then you don't have self-confidence. I don't need self-confidence. I need God's confidence. Amen. My self-esteem does not depend on what you say to me. Amen. I know that I'm, I, 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 I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I know that I walked in the plan and purpose of God for my life. That is enough for me. Whether you tell me that I'm some or not, it doesn't bother me. I have a wife. Thank God for that. <laughs> Amen. You see, I just brought out something from my, from my background. I remember when I was in primary school. Woman, a tenant, my father said, I told me, you are so ugly. I doubt whether you, you, you ever get a woman to marry you. And that thing remained with me for many years. Even up to my late teenage years, I believed that I was ugly, that I would never get anybody to marry me. Just a simple word like that. So be careful of what you say into the life of some people. Praise the Lord. But now I know better. Amen? I know better. Whatever you say does not actually affect me. It is the way I react to it that matters. Praise the Lord. Now, let me get back to what I'm saying, Jerry. <laughs> God, who are the people that God is looking for? God is looking for people of character, not charisma. Those that will not be carried away with success. Amen? Those <clears throat> that, 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 that will not eat and drink because of pot, a, 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 a pot of mess. Amen? The, 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 what they will eat because of their belly. They, they forget the plans and purpose of God for their lives. Amen? God is looking for they who will not, because of that, accept bribe, accept corruption. Amen. God is looking for people that they can trust. Look at that lady that went to testify in the church, and they put her there as a minister within a month. She was embezzling billions. Is that a testimony to God? In the name of God, praise the Lord. Those who will not be carried away by the corruption of the system, those who will not be carried away by the seducing works. That is in the world today. Those who will not be taken away by, 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 by men and women of easy virtue. Praise the Lord. Those who will not be like Samson and Reuben. But people that will be like Joseph. People that will be like Daniel. Those are the people that God is looking for. Now, amen. amen. People that will rise up like Joshua. Those that will be focused like Elisha. God is looking for those people. Amen. God is looking for people like Caleb. Caleb. At the age at which many people they go into retirement homes, that was when Caleb rose up and said, give me this mountain. Amen. People will not say, because I'm now 60 years old, I can't do anything again. Praise the Lord. God is looking for people, despite their age, despite their weaknesses, they still want to do something for God. Those are the people that go ahead and fulfill the destiny and plans of God for their lives. Amen. 2024 is already going. Amen. We are in the last month of the first quarter. And the Lord has told us, I continue to ring this in your ears. We were in the men's prayer meeting yesterday, and one of us testified that he dreamt and he saw himself flying. People are flying already. Amen. People are flying already. We need courage this year. We need courage. A lot of people that will rise up because of what God has shown them and because of the courage that they are bringing into their situation, a lot of people will, uh, uh, will achieve a lot of things this year. Amen. Amen. 
It will take focus to fly. And that's what we'll be talking about since January. We need to be focused this year. And if you are focused by the grace of the living God, you will achieve the plans and purpose of God for your life. It shall be so in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us rise up. I, I ran a bit because of time. Let us rise up. Let us rise up. I want us to bless the name of the almighty God. Let us bless him. Let us bless him. The Lord has been speaking unto us for, on this topic since January. Let us bless him. Let us bless the name of the living God. Father, we bless you. We worship you. We adore you. We give glory to you. Blessed be your name. Thank you, everlasting God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. Are you here this morning or you are listening to me online? You have not surrendered your life to Christ? Or maybe you are born again, but you are, there's a bit of a gap between yourself and God. This is the best opportunity to reconcile. Because if you are not in the plans and purpose of God, there is no destiny that you are for. Actually, you are just like a Reuben. You are just like an Esau carrying age around. Do you say, claim to be the firstborn of the family? We arise in the heavenly, you are no longer. Why don't you just reconcile with the Lord this morning? Why don't you just pray a simple prayer? Lord, here am I. Have mercy upon me. Forgive me my sins. Put me back into your plan and purpose for my life. Thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want us to pray that, Father, I thank you for this series that you have brought to us in January. Let your plan and purpose for my life be fulfilled. Let us begin to talk to the Almighty God. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord Almighty God, King of glory, for this series of messages that you have brought to us this past seven weeks. Lord Almighty God, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Father, let your plan, your original plan and purpose for my life, Lord Almighty God, let it be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Let your plan and purpose for my life, let it be fulfilled. Thank you, everlasting Father. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You see, we are all humans, flesh and blood. We have one weakness or the other. We have one strength or the other. But it is the weakness that we are concerned about. Amen. I want us to pray this morning that, Father, please fortify me against those weaknesses in me in the mighty name of Jesus. Those weaknesses that may derail me, that may derail my destiny. Father, fortify me against them. In the mighty name of Jesus, fortify me, Lord, fortify me. Against those weaknesses, against those weaknesses that may derail my, that want to derail my, my, my destiny, fortify me, Lord. Strengthen me against them. In the mighty name of Jesus, give me the grace to face the truth, to accept the truth, to make corrections in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, don't let those weaknesses, anger, impatience, unforgiveness, lust for power, and things of the world, you know them, begin to mention them unto the Lord. Tell God this morning, this area, that area, don't let it destroy my destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't let it derail my destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Reveal even those ones that I do not know. Father, the, 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 the psalmist said, search me, O oh Lord. Uh, and let me see if there's any wickedness, uh, wickedness in me. Amen. Let, let, let the Lord search you this morning. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, search me this morning. Search me. Give me the grace, the courage, the courage to make amends in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, help me. Thank you, my Father. Blessed be your name, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. Let's see First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. I'll just read it. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. Amen. All things are lawful unto me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Brethren, you see, we live in a society where we are free to do whatever I want to do. If you want, if you want to get down on the street, walk with your head and your leg up. Everybody will applaud you. Nobody will tell you that you are doing anything wrong. Amen. 
But the Lord Almighty God will help us to know that it is not everything that is lawful that contributes to a man's destiny. Actually, there is a lot of things that are lawful that can derail a man's destiny. Amen? I want us to pray that, Father, whatever it is that can jeopardize my destiny, even if it is lawful, keep me away from them in the mighty name of Jesus. Keep me away from them in the name of Jesus. Anything, oh Lord, that can jeopardize, that can jeopardize my destiny, Lord, even if they are lawful. Hey, Lord Almighty God, King of glory, keep me away from them. Purge it for, out of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we, name we pray. Quickly, I want us to pray that, Father, don't let me be my own enemy. Oh, let us begin to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Almighty God, don't let me be my own enemy. Help me to fulfill my destiny. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. When a man is his own enemy, it will take God to help him. Amen. Ah, I will not be my own enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. Arise and help me, O God. Strengthen me, O Lord. Strengthen me. Give me the courage to face the truth, to accept responsibility. All those internal enemies, Lord Almighty God, that war against my destiny. Thank you, my Father. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want us to talk to the Lord, our Father, as you take me higher this year, as you promote me this year, let me become more humble. Let me be more sensitive to the Spirit of God. Let us begin to pray. Let us begin to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, as you promote me, as you take me higher, Lord Almighty God, King of glory, let me become more humble, more sensitive to the Holy Spirit, more active in the place of prayer, in the mighty name. And let me return all the glory to you. I will not share your glory, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, O God. Thank you, my Father. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You see, there are some moments that we will have done something before we say, ah, I did this. Amen. And even though you suddenly realize that you've done something, it could, have, it, it, could, it, could, it could have an eternal repercussion. Amen? Praise the Lord. So I want us to pray this morning that, Father, don't let any careless moment of weakness derail my destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let us begin to pray, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, any moment of carelessness, oh, Lord, um, those moments of weaknesses, those moments of carelessness, Father, don't let it derail my destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We bless your holy name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Finally, I want us to pray for courage. Amen. A lot of people will need courage. Courage to start that business. Courage to start that studies. Courage to rise up and do that exam. Courage to, to, to face that challenges that you are looking externally. I want us to pray for courage. Father, the courage to rise up. The courage to rise up to, to fulfill my destiny. Give to me in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us talk to the Lord. Father, that courage to rise up. The courage to, to, to face the challenges of life. That courage to do the exam. That courage to do that qualifying exam. That courage to go back to school. That courage to, to start that business. That courage to do that which you have revealed to me that you want me to do. Thank you, my Father. Blessed be your name, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. I've not mentioned a prayer point that is coming to your spirit. Why don't you just talk to the Almighty God? For the next few seconds, talk to the Lord. Talk to the Almighty God. Talk to the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Father, I ask for your humble spirit, O oh God. The grace to control my spirit, to rule over my spirit. The courage to rise up, Lord. Ah, that which you have shown me that I should do. The grace, O oh Lord. To face these challenges, to face this task, 
Give to me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. Blessed be your name, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Father, we want to thank you for this series of messages that you have brought to us, O God. Father, we, we will not just be here as alone, but we will be doers of your word. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, especially this morning, we ask, O God, those weaknesses that are internal to us, we know that you will take care of the external. But those ones that are internal to us, our character, our habits, amen, anger, sometimes gluttony, we eat too much, amen. Those areas, Lord Almighty God, that can derail our destinies, the courage to rise up to accept responsibility and face them square on. Father, give to us in the name of Jesus Christ. And the grace to overcome those areas, give to us in the mighty name of Jesus Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. As we go on in the journey of this 2024, Father, we know we will fly. We, the courage to fly you will give to us in the name of Jesus. And Lord Almighty God, you will support us to fly. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. Thank you, everlasting God. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Welcome to COG. This is a redeemed Christian Church of God, Chapel of Grace. Our motto at COG is discovering potentials and fulfilling destinies. We want to welcome everyone worshiping with us in person and online. May God bless as you worship. Join us this Thursday at 7 p.m. on Zoom for our Digging Deep. The Zoom ID is 990-799-799. 811 and the password is 123456. Join us this Friday at 7 p.m. here at the church for our prayer meeting. Join us every Friday except for the last Friday of the month for an hour of divine intervention prayers from 11:45 p.m. to 12:45 a.m. on Zoom. The Zoom ID is 9907998 it's one one and the password is one two three four five six if you're able to worship with us physically you can worship with us online every sunday at 9 50 a.m for our sunday school service and 10 30 a.m for our main service they will be streamed live on youtube and facebook at rccg cog ottawa for those that would need a ride to church or would like to be dropped off after church, please let Pastor Afolayo and Brother Did You Know a day or two before for logistics purposes. Thank you. Offerings and tithes can be given physically at the church or by sending an email money transfer to grace at rccg at yahoo.ca or you can text to give at 613-900-5584 and follow the steps. Please ensure you clearly write your full name when sending an email money transfer. For those who need their 2023 tax receipts, please send an email to admin at chapelofgrace.ca with the subject line tax receipts 2023. Thank you. Let us continue to pray and donate towards a church building project, Graceland. We are trusting and believing that God will pleasantly surprise us in Jesus' name. Graceland, in the comment section of the money track, we as a church will be raising funds. All working members will be asked to bring forward $200 monthly for the next three years. Please see Minister Chika for more information and to put down your name for participation. May God bless and provide as you give. The men of Issachar gathered to pray on the second Saturday of every month from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. on Zoom. The Zoom ID is 990-799 and the password is 123456. Please mark your calendars for the first quarter prayer retreat of 2024. The retreat will be taking place from Thursday, March 28th to Saturday, March 30th. And the theme for the retreat is the power of his resurrection. Please stay tuned for more details. Thank you. 
The youth and young adults of Chapel of Grace Living Light Ministries meet on Zoom every Wednesday at 6 p.m. for prayers. Please, youth and young adults, join us. The ID is 990-799-811 and the password is 123456. You can also reach out to us on any of the church phone lines or send an email to llmyouth at chapelofgrace.ca. Please follow us on Instagram at llmyouth for more information on upcoming youth events. Leave It Loud is back and early bird registration is now open. It will be taking place at the University of British Columbia, Vancouver from the 25th of July to the 28th. The theme for this edition is One Thing. Please endeavor to register on time as late registration begins on June 1st. For more information and assistance, please email us at info at chapelofgrace.ca or call us at 613-791-1332 or 613-667-5234. Before we conclude the announcement, our wisdom corner for today is, Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. John 16 verse 24. Please visit the Chapel of Grace website, www.chapelofgrace.ca for weekly sermons and upcoming events. You can also follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, all at RCCGCOG Ottawa. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Bye.